Okay, so we are halfway through this. Can you believe it? Holy crap. Coming in at number 20. Almost just gave this one away, talking about the last record. So yes, Gorguts with Pleiades Dust coming in at number 20. Oh god, them just exploring all of their tricks and more into one 33 minute continuous running piece. Uh, this this was great, this was fantastic. Great artwork, great concept. Uh, but you wanna talk about outside of the box instrumentals mixed with death metal. I mean, this band has always been doing that, but they, I think they've really reached a crowning achievement with this as a single track. I mean, Colored Sands was a masterpiece in and of itself, but I feel like boiling it down and stripping away, you know, what could be excess, ridiculous. And a, and a very transcendental experience. I mean, you can meditate to this and, and just go into very far off places. So check this out, Pleiades Dust by Gorguts. All right, number 19, uh, a record that honestly could have been higher on the list. This is a record that could have gone left or right. Um, there was a big lineup change with this group, um, but they were able to hire the right members and continue as if really nothing changed and perhaps made one of the best records to date. Obscura with Acroasi. I believe that's how you say it. So after the release of Omnivium, I'm sure that was just a very daunting task even for them to do. Uh, and Cosmogenesis was just fantastic as well. But I could really just feel an anxiety with the band. It's like, if I release those records, like where would I go in the future? So they also kind of turned back the dial a little bit. I mean, yes, this record is very technical and very fast. It's sort of just their brand of technical death metal as it is. But um, they really explore the possibilities of slowing down the tempo and, you know, kicking up the melodic atmospheres. And they really created a unpredictable piece of music here. What they delivered here is definitely album of the year worthy, but for me, it's, uh, it's a little bit failing in comparison to their previous work, but still shows what this band is capable of and where they could possibly go in the future. Uh, coming in at number 19 is Obscura with Acroasi. All right, uh, coming in at number 18, we have a band that, um, yeah, th th this might be it for them, and I was so glad to see them uh, at the uh, the Paradise in Boston this year play what could be the last show they ever play in in the area. Dillinger Escape Plan with Dissociation. Oh man, like what could be said about this band that hasn't already been said? You know, they really took the the whole just twisted, aggressive math core stylings to perhaps the, the limit that it could ever possibly go with just in your face antics and aggressiveness and just no cares no boundaries going from their first release of their catalog up until now it has really been a musical journey for them but i feel like with this as their swan song of a record they really embodied everything of their career from the slow to the heavy to the fast to the aggressive great job fills your escape plan with dissociation great stuff coming in at number 17 is a band that made it to the honorable mentions list the last time I talked about them, the last time they released two albums, uh, which might give this away. Uh, this is Periphery with Periphery 3 Select Difficulty. It has now become obvious that the P series are the best albums that this band puts out. I, I personally thought that Alpha Omega was a big letdown, a big step down from what they had originally framed as a, uh, a groundwork for them, but this one was a return to form. Periphery 1 was my record of the year, of that calendar year, even well, even well before I started doing video reviews, and Periphery 2 um, actually was where this channel got started, uh, me reviewing that, and that one really came to uh, become one of my favorite things of that year, even though I was very unsure of it. But talking about Periphery again, uh, it makes me feel good because they seem to have returned to a formula that they really enjoy. They have a lineup that seems to really work at this point and I think that this is the reformation of what made them great and a new beginning for them that I want to see 
carry them forward. Yeah, periphery made gent great again <laughs> with this one. So um, yeah, more power to them. Good stuff. So coming in at number 17 is periphery with periphery three. Select difficulty. Coming into number 16, boom. What can I say? This individual is amazing. Uh, I've met him and it was a life-changing experience. I've definitely been on one of his albums and it was an amazing experience. Uh, one of the best personalities in all of metal and one of the biggest influencers in my entire life. Uh, this is Devin Townsend with Transcendence, as many of you may know, like Terrio is one of my top five favorite albums of all time. In every album I sort of measure up to that. I don't know, the, the Devin Townsend project is something totally different than his past, but, um, you know, certain albums have come close. This one is definitely a great vision of everything that he's done over the last five, six years and sort of matured it, slowed it down, and kind of cut off the fat and sort of let the other bandmates take the reins at evolving the sound and evolving the songs. I feel like this is more of a band effort than anything else. And also the production from Nalia Periphery on this is just booming. I guess that's a great word. It, it does have a lot of velocity and a lot of punch and, and, and great dynamics where it needs to be. Devin is known for dynamics, but this one is, is more full of it than uh, the, the past albums have been. So good work on the production on this. Number 16, Devin Townsend Project with Transcendence. But on. Coming in at number 15 is a metal band that even Devin Townsend himself said that every modern metal band rips off at this point. Uh, jokes aside, I'm not quite sure if everyone does, but the gent guys love them. This is Meshuggah with the violent Sleep of Reason. So these guys we know them at this point as being perhaps the heaviest band on the planet, yet they still write music that is just the most groovy, planet-smashing, you know, mind-bending stuff you, you could ever imagine. They did this in more of a live setting uh, this time around, and, you know, they, they track live vocals, live drums, live bass, live guitar, and it, it really shows, it, it really adds to the atmosphere and the velocity in the energy of this record. Uh, it basically takes everything that they're known for and makes it sort of more natural. Uh, and this is something that really does come natural to them, like seeing them live, it, it does sound better than the record and they, they caught a record live and yeah, I think they were really onto something with this because it just added an extra dimension that hasn't been found in Meshuggah music in, in years. If they continue down this path, I am very afraid of what might happen. But we shall see what happens with that. Meshuggah, with the violent sleep of reason, coming in at number 15. Wow. Okay, coming in at number 14 is a kind of a special one, considering that there was sort of a death in this family. Throw some blat with Metaconia. Now, for those who remember Woods of Ypres, and the album Grey Skies and Electric Light. Joel Vallette was the accompanying musician, guitar player, uh, background vocalist, uh, I think he did some of the piano. Uh, but Thrust and Blatt is uh, Joel's main project. This is very bizarre because it really feels like David Gold died and then his energy went into Joel. The vocal stylings, it just sounds so strikingly similar that it just makes you think and go, hmm. Definitely different than, you know, Woods of Ypres, but, but still has that charm and that scarily close character. Um, if, if no one knew this album came out this year, I highly suggest it if you're a fan of Woods of Ypres. Uh, hopefully there's not another death that we see, you know, come soon. So coming in at number 14, we have Throsselblatt with Metaconia. Great album. At number 13, we have something that was not so unlucky, but uh, incredibly captivating and, and very cold. This is Winter's Gate by Insomnium, a single 40-minute 
track from the melodic death metal masters. Uh, this was very unexpected in, in terms of a formula and a concept for them. Uh, they usually craft very well thought out records, but this was a very well thought out track. But in order to have a 40 minute track, you really have to add some depth and really add some variety to keep you engaged and, and not want to shut the record off. So doing a single track is a very daring thing. But this is one of those tracks that you just do not want to shut off. That's a very good thing. They were able to captivate the listener from point A to point B to the point where we actually want to listen to it again and experience it again. Uh, and considering this lyrical concept came from a full short story, you even want to explore that short story after. There's so much I could say about this, but I would rather you experience this for yourself. If you have 40 minutes to explore a record, or even a TV show, screw the TV show, listen to this with the lyrics up on your screen, or out in front of you, by the record if you can. Insomnia and Winter's Gate coming in at number 13, well deserving of this top spot. Coming in at number 12 is a record that made it up to uh, a lot of people's top spots. This is Arctis by Isan. Um, man, this album got a lot of uh, praise from this year. Very well deserving. You know, I always thought Emperor was great, but I, I still thought that from the beginning of Isan's solo career that his solo ideas had more potential this was that potential. This was the full potential of Isan's creations realized and executed all in one headspace. There are some strange ideas that kind of come up from the, the floorboards on this, but you just gotta, you just gotta wonder and disbelief and, and just enjoy it at the same time. There's really not much I can say. I would rather you experience this if you haven't, uh, then we talk about it. Um, and, and that says a lot, so go do it. Coming in at number 12, Isan with Arctis. Yeah, hand in hand with Arctis, this one was, uh, it flip-flopped a lot. But this is Weather Escape with The Northern Sanctuary. Oh man, I mean Dan Swano has pumped out so many records. Uh, but yet again, this is this is another great one, and uh, this seems to be the perfect blend of Edge of Sanity and Nightingale. So sort of the progressive rock, doom metal mixed with the gothic, more symphonic rock. This is one that that even harks back to some '80s '80s metal, and there's a catchiness, there's a romantic nature. You're blown away by it, you're, you're wooed by it, and after it, it happens, you just want to just listen to it all over again. I don't know how Dan has so many ideas, but, but somehow he's encapsulated it into sort of a fully realized idea with this, and I, I love it. Great stuff from Dan, and uh, just barely making the top 10, but we got some really great stuff coming in the next top 10 list. So, coming in number 11, Witherscape with the Northern Sanctuary. Okay. And we've made it to the top 10, and uh, holy crap, this this was one of the best top 10s in recent memory. These resonated with me on a, on a very personal level. Perhaps there's a personal bias, perhaps there's an actual, you know, objective opinion based on what was put forth on these records. It's a mix of both. I don't care. Coming in at number 10, we got Fate's Warning with Theories of Flight. Dare I say, this is the best album since Parallels, and I said great things about Darkness in a Different Light. I said a lot of great things about that record, but this, it, it, it tops that on every level. Th this seems like classic Fate's Warning, slight lineup change, but, but with the modern production and a modern vision. Uh, this is unbelievable. I listened to this countless times. The only downfall from this record that I could think of was was the title track and how they closed the record. I think that they could have perhaps done a little bit better with it, but at the same time, it, it doesn't matter. This record already had a body of work on it that was just so awe-inspiring that you really wonder a band this far in their career what they could do next. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Definitely top 10 worthy. I challenge them to beat this. 
I think they could do it. Coming in at number 10 is Fate's Warning with Theories of Flight. All right, we're gonna do this. Coming in at number nine is a record that it, it, it seemed that everyone from this year unanimously hated. If you guys know me at this point, this should come as no surprise. And uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about it. Dream Theater with the Astonishing. And I, I'll just say this. Um, if, if you didn't like Dream Theater in the past, you're, you're not going to like this. It, it doesn't matter. It, when they have an idea and they, they want to do it, they do it in a very big way. you got to give them credit for it. And there were some ideas on this record that, that reminded me of, you know, some recent Disney films. It was a little soft. There was some auto-tune that I thought was very unnecessary, especially because I saw the record live and they performed it better than them. Than the, than the studio record, than the studio recording. And that says a lot, because this had a lot on it. A lot could have gone wrong, but I think it was a very fair execution of their idea. And I, I think this is some of the best work that they've done since Octavarium, which also says a lot. I feel like this band has now rediscovered some of their, some of their inspiration. They could have done it in a different way. But I think that they're finally they're they're finally soaring to heights that they've never done before, and I feel glad that they're satisfied with this record. That's all I can really say about it now without doing a full review. Yet. So, coming in at number nine, "The Astonishing" by Dream Theater. Coming in at number eight is a record that probably won't make it to anyone's top ten list, but uh, this is a very personal one for me, considering he is uh, the reason I am a musician myself. Uh, this is Eric Johnson with sort of a self-titled record. Uh, it's just simply entitled EJ. But um, being just a master virtuoso on the uh, electric Stratocaster, this is a record where he just stripped down sort of all of his famed features and, and released a record that was all acoustic and piano. He has sort of tapped into this sort of style on us. Uh, first tracks, but this is a, a full record of that, just re-envisioned. This might be very old-fashioned for, for, for people, especially people who listen to modern metal. I can get that, but he's the reason why I play guitar, and that's never going to stop, and I will always get inspiration from him. I think this is a well-deserved top 10 pick from this year. So, coming in number 8 is Eric Johnson with EJ. And number seven, lucky number seven, is a record that uh, an individual that I briefly touched upon on my second channel. And uh, if he ever sees this video, I'm sure he'd be absolutely thrilled to to know that he he beat out my personal favorite musician uh, and uh, shares a, a very strikingly similar last name, but not not quite. But uh, yes, we're finally talking about him on a top list of the year. This is Nick Johnston with Remarkably Human. Nick Johnston is one of, if not my favorite, modern guitar player and just has the, the, the sexiest guitar tone in, in modern day. If that's even a thing, can that be a thing? We'll, we'll make it a thing. He just has a very sexy guitar tone. I don't know how he does it. There's just, there's so much emotion behind just every pluck that he does. You just, you just feel every note of his music. Uh, again, I love sci-fi, alien themed, anything that involves with the guitar. This this just follows suit with everything that I love about it. And uh, this is really just a soundtrack to just a, a great sci-fi alien film. And you, you can just get lost in it. He's a young master and God, what he could do in the future, I don't even want to know right now. Love him, Nick Johnston, number seven with Remarkably Human. All right, we're really getting to talking about guitar now. I love it, and I love this music. This is The Thunder from Down Under, Pliny with uh, Handmade Cities. Uh, this is his, uh, what he considers his first full-length record, even though he's released uh, many EPs in the past. I got his little box set up in the corner here. Uh, do not sleep on this musician. He's already got the accolade from Steve Vai as uh, one of the best modern guitar players. Yeah, 
uh, it's, it's so deceptively simple, melodic, and awesome, and groovy, and, and just awesome, and just, you, you get lost in it, and it makes you feel happy, and that's a good thing. So listen to Pliny's Handmade Cities, because uh, that would also make me happy. So make him also happy. Wow, there's a lot of happiness in this. Yes, this is happy. Uh, Handmade Cities by Pliny at number six. Just great. Amazing. Number five. We're still talking about guitar. Guitar is great. I love guitar. But this, uh, this guitarist, I swear, is, is the guitarist from the future. And every time I hear his music, it sounds like it's coming from 50 million light years away. And, and hopefully I could potentially tap into just a, a small, minuscule part of that energy. Uh, perhaps maybe not, but we'll, we'll see with time. Animals as leaders with the madness of many. Good lord, this this guy on a string guitar, Tosin Abasi, just seems to reinvent the wheel every single time he touches the damn thing. If you're a guitar player, you're probably going to want to quit at the end of listening to this, but just do it. Yeah, that's it. Let's do it. Coming in at number five, The Madness of Many by Animals as Leaders. Top four. Now we're, now we're getting into a celebration of just music in general. And, and this record in and of itself pretty much solidifies why I love progressive music. We had Dream Theater's Astonishing, but um, here we have the Neil Morse Band with the similitude of a dream. What I've discovered more about this that I liked was band interaction. There, there was so much life to this record. And uh, Neil Morse is, is one that I've really grown to love in terms of his it's just love for life and it is very emotional and just his quest for hope in in every lyric and every challenge that he faces i love that i always feel really uplifted whenever i listen to a neil morse project but this i feel like is is his masterwork to date especially as a full band there's a lot of great vocals to be had on this record a lot of great homages to everything from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, even to recent times. It embodies literally 50 years of music into one record. Great melodies, great memorable moments, and just a very uplifting story. This really gets better with every listen and climbed to the top of this list with every listen. It really did. And I had to stop it at number four because these top three that I'm about to speak of are just godly. Uh, so let, let's get to it. But closing off, Similitude of a Dream by Neil Morse Band coming in at number four. Okay, the top three. Haken with Affinity. Now, we spoke about The Mountain whenever that came out. That also made it to number three. But this record is just something else entirely. This is another record that takes the history of music and wraps it in a present package. I don't know how this band has done this, but they have transcended the past and the future simultaneously and, and put it into space. There are so many melodies and memorable moments and memorable songs. Bound by Gravity being one of the most beautiful pieces of ever heard let alone from this year this this record listen to it immerse yourself in it this is progressive rock from the past and future all wrapped in one what this band could do in the future ah oh, it's incredible number three haken with affinity okay coming in number two we're gonna get we're gonna get serious for a second normally i hate to have a personal bias, but this is a personal bias that uh, is very justified, considering these are some of my best friends. Astronoid with air. Oh god, guys, I know you're gonna watch this video. I could, I could do this forever. Um, so, Astronoid, yes, uh, they, they, they've taken the the whole progressive atmospheric black metal shoegaze thing to just to just the heavens with this i know brett i know casey i know dan they are a fan of everything and all the best stuff but they they are also incredible musicians and in just record engineers 
They, they've crafted one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. This almost made it to number one. This could have been number one. But there was, there was one more record that hit me harder than this that did not have a personal bias. And I, 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 I would hate to put someone that I'm friends with at number one because that would just, to me, it would just seem sort of wrong. But just so right. But there, there was one more record that, that beat this out, unfortunately. Guys, I'm sorry. But we're going to get to that now. But if you haven't already, check out Astronoid with Air. Okay. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to do this this year. This, um, this number one, this just barely got a 10 out of 10 for me. I mean, this is like 99.9 .9 for me. Anyway, we're going to talk about it. Number one album joining the pantheon of greatness that we have talked about for uh, six years now on this channel. Number one record of 2016 is The Fall of Hearts by Catatonia. Uh, <laughs> this thing about it leaves me speechless. This, this just tacked it on every level that I look for. Great songwriting, number one. Terrific performances. Nuances around every corner. Great flow to the record. But also a great unpredictability. Uh, the production, just flawless. Dynamic, powerful, soft when it needs to be. There's so much that I could say about this record. And just like the internal imagery that you get in your head and just the romantic nature of, of being wooed by such emotion and, and then getting crushed by such heaviness. Uh, there are so many adjectives I could use to describe this album that I would I would probably use an entire dictionary. I love this record. This just embodies so much of what I've already loved about Catatonia, but has pushed it into a more experimental, more open-minded, more progressive direction, and an and adventurous direction at that. And I'm still not sick of it. And I, I Even just thinking about it, I want to put this record on right now and just enjoy it from start to finish. Uh, this is a flawless disc. The only reason why I didn't give it a perfect 10 is because I thought that it was just too good to be true. But it lands at number one for 2016. It wins. This album wins. And, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been a long one. I had a lot to say. And I could have said more. There was many more albums I could have talked about. Enjoy my honorable mentions list. And uh, just get lost in it. Just enjoy it all. Love it. Share it. Enjoy it. That's it. Onward into 2017 we go. Who knows what we'll talk about, but I have a feeling it's going to be just utterly fantastic. Cheers.